Okay, so uh, let's go over the pack. Got it up on the screen there with some magic. Here, let's uh, touch the card, or I hold the card like <laughs> this or something. There we go. Look, I'm, I'm holding the card up here, my giant size copy. Uh, all right, so we have the uh, Winterfell Kennel Master, who uh, has two cost. He's a Stark character, power icon, one strength. He's an ally. Ally doesn't do anything bad, right? Yet. Not yet. Uh, challenge action. If you control a participating Stark character, kneel a direwolf character or a character with a direwolf attachment to have it participate in the current challenge on your side, limit once per phase. So, what do you think about this guy? Uh, at first, I didn't like it. Uh, and that's mostly because I forgot that. Uh, what was it? Was it Nymeria? The wolf? Nymeria uh, Lady. Lady is the wolf attachment. Lady is yeah. the wolf attachment that can be put on a Stark character and. Pay one gold, you can move it anywhere you want. Mm -hmm. So that alone makes me think that this card is one that should see play. I I wouldn't go overboard and put three copies of it, obviously, because you don't need it. But uh, things like that are great because now you can have characters with renown participate twice and possibly get two oh, yes. power for renown in a single challenges phase. So I personally think it's a it's a good card if you're using it in that way. It wouldn't make direwolf pup pups any better than they are, I guess, because they only have the one icon. So but here's the thing though, and, and the tricky part with this this wording, and I remember from first edition, is you're sneaking this in the challenge, it it just adds it in like uh, the Ars is the Fury, you can throw anyone in a challenge, mm -hmm. it doesn't care what icons they have, you just throw them in, it doesn't say if able. Oh right, right. So right. you can just throw, you can have uh, Sansa uh, participate in a military challenge if she's got Lady on her, mm -hmm. you can kneel her and just throw her in if you need the extra strength, so it, it gets around that... Uh, your your icon issue. So it'd be similar to Jon Snow when he has, uh, or just Jon Snow. Sorry, what is he on? He's only intrigue though. Well, he no. only has an intrigue icon, but he participates in everything. Well, yeah, well he's yeah. in everything. So this you have to kneel the character though. Jon Snow stands, but this is just the option of just it's let, let's it be a little more flexible. Like you're saying, uh, like those direwolf pups, they get that plus one strength from all your other direwolves. Uh -huh. Which would be great, then you can throw a pup in an intrigue challenge yep. to defend and, and maybe block that intrigue that's coming at you or a power challenge or whatnot. So, mm -hmm. if you got enough direwolves in or you're playing with Lady, like it is kind of could work in a direwolf themed deck, which obviously FFG is trying to get us there with the stupid location that gives uh, direwolves ambush and stuff. I mean, they're obviously seeding the whole direwolf themed deck, mm -hmm. um, but we do have enough direwolves with some of the uh, direwolf uniques and the non uniques in the Stark pack already, or Stark. Uh, Card pool already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a two cost chud, but the monocon yeah makes it a little tough. And there's no there's no downside to playing allies yet. So I mean, the yeah. other thing he's useful for too is that whole idea of uh, is it Grey Wind, the one that you no, what's the one that eats characters minus two? Is that some, not summer. Grey it's Grey Wind. It's Grey Wind, right? Yeah. So Grey Wind can eat a character on your own side. That's one strength or less. Two if Rob's out. Mm -hmm. This guy is only one strength. You could kill him to trigger Rob's ability uh, to stand all your characters if you need to. Um, and you don't care if he goes away, really, right? It's mm -hmm. two bucks. It's not brand, so it's not, you're not you're not upset to see this guy go, really, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So that's Winterfell Kennel Master. Yeah, is anyone saying anything about this card that I see in the chat? Nope, they want they want us to plug in the uh, Mortal Kombat machine back there. <laughs> oh, Rich is already commenting. Can <laughs> <laughs> you throw her in trigger with ice? Uh, Lady Catelyn. So can you throw her in with ice, then trigger ice? Yeah. Throw. So if you had ice uh, attached to a character already, and then threw it in with the direwolf attachment, could you trigger ice? Yeah, because when you go to those reactions at that point, that character's in the challenge that you just won. Yeah, you yeah. could. Yeah, as long as you've done it, because this is challenge action, so this has to happen either, uh, has to happen after character after attackers are declared in that action window, or after defenders are declared in that action window, mm -hmm. before you decide winners or losers. So there's two action windows you could do this in, which is way before uh, the reaction window. So yeah, that's totally legit. And, uh, yeah. All right, let's move on to the next one. Uh, which is, yeah, 
Winterfell Castle. Let me line this card up in this little awesome holder here. All right. Is it going to focus? Can you guys see that? I hope so. Uh, all right. Hey, watch it. So, uh, Winterfell Castle. Sorry, that one? Three cost location, stronghold, and Winterfell. During a military or power challenge in which you control two or more unique participating Stark characters, each of those characters gets plus two strength. Yeah. I don't have much to say about it. <laughs> the, the part of it I look at, right, right, that drew me to it was, oh, three cost location. Oh, that's neat. Uh, yeah, but you could probably reduce it with fealty, right? Mm -hmm. And then I looked and it was not loyal. <laughs> I was like, okay, so you're spending three bucks on this. So you can use it out of house, but it's Stark characters only, so, and they're unique. So when would you have the most unique Starks? Obviously in a Stark only deck, right? So that you got to pay three for this. Yeah. I don't know, but... It does, the adding two strength happens, so like during the military of power, uh, it happens right away. So there's no chance for the whole Dracaris burn thing to happen yep. before their strength's buffed. So it makes Targ a little more burn proof. It also makes, or I mean Stark a little more burn proof. Um, and, and also I see the whole, uh, making it easier to push through your win by five or more, whether right. you're going the power route with the whole searching locations from um, support of the people, mm -hmm. or you're doing put to the swords, obviously. Uh, I don't know, it just adds more strength, but... I mean, I think it's a decent card, but the fact that it's limited to having you need two unique starts, that's a problem in itself. Um, it is, and I thought, like, I was thinking, okay, you only have the Stark family, but then a good player pointed out to me all the dire, all those unique direwolves they have too. Like, Stark has quite a few uniques, all all cost spectrums, right? Mm -hmm. So you putting Rob and like one of the wolves in uh, the unique wolves or whatever into a military challenge, that's two uniques right there. Mm -hmm. Adding four more strength, I mean, that can help get your put to the swords off a and little more be consistent. Turned off by Lannister. Yeah, true, true, true. But I just, the three costs is what kind of... Yeah, that's what I was before. saying. Like, right away, economy, I was like, uh... That's tight. Mm -hmm. So to get that out and afford all your uni uniques and to have that situation happen, it's... I don't know. So I don't know. For me, it would be a card that I would either play in setup or, like, late game. I don't think getting it out mid-game would be too easy because that's when you're focused on, you know, paying for those characters to make sure that you have good icon spread and things like that and you're not so much True. worried about the plus two. So then probably like a one of in a deck if anything just so you maybe see it later. Yeah, it's like I wouldn't go more than one at this point. Maybe later there'll be more reason to play it but you know what we need? We need uh, House of Dreams from first yeah, edition to, start to play with it in play, good to go, immune to effects, yeah. build a deck around it but right now I don't know. I'm sure someone out there will find a way to put this to good use but uh, yeah I don't know. I don't see it. I don't see it right now. Not I like it. It's nice, but I'm not really feeling the competitive side of it. So that's just me. All right. So next card. We have the Lady in Waiting from Tyrell. So she is two cost, Tyrell character, intrigue icon only, one strength, companion. She is loyal. Uh, so Lady in Waiting may be Marshall as a duplicate at no cost on a lady character you own and control. So you have to own it and control it. You can't dupe anything you've stolen. So, um, what do you think? I think this one's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's great in any deck where you're bannering with Tyrell, obviously. There are <laughs> lots of powerful ladies currently in the game. And so, rather than, you know, worry about filling your deck up with body banners, because Tyrell has the two strong ladies, the two great ones, but if I'm thinking as Greyjoy, there's a lot of times where my ash is stuck on the table and I can't find her dupes. Mm. Full lady waiting and throw her down. I don't have to pay for her because yep. she just gets marshaled as a duplicate, which is free, yep. obviously. So I think it's a good dual threat card, plus it has the intrigue icon. Um, this is me thinking from a great George perspective, being yeah, so of low on intrigue. Of course. <laughs> so at least so worst case, intrigue. yeah, you see her early and you haven't seen Asha or ladies or whatever, you can still throw her out as just claim soak, an intrigue icon. Mm -hmm. I like it like for that. I think, uh, yeah, like comparing it to the bodyguard is good. It's basically like a free bodyguard on your ladies only, not lords. Um, but I just thinking the whole like, boy, sorry, I made a mistake because this is 
It's loyal. It's loyal. Sorry. So you can't banner. You'd have to go the other way. You still could have yeah, you could Tyrell deck with Greyjoy in it. Yeah. Um, but just thinking of this with some of the Stark ladies, they have Sansa, Asha, or Arya. Arya, sorry. Sansa, Arya, Catelyn. Catelyn's loyal though, so you can't mix this with her, right? Right. I don't know what the new one's going to be, though. Marjorie, who's in faction for this, is a lady. Yeah. Lady yeah, Olena. Yeah. Marjorie probably the one that gets her the most. Yeah. Well, as soon as Marjorie comes in, your opponent kind of does anything they can to get rid of that plus three. That is true. <laughs> so, it would be nice <laughs> to have This keeps her on the table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just like it. It's like just basically like having more dupes, so it's, it's good for those decks when you focus on a, a single lady. And... Uh, you need more dupes than just the two other copies of that lady you have in the deck just mm -hmm. to make sure she stays around, right? But yeah, I don't know. Decent little chud. It's one cost in fealty. If uh, it's another loyal card to help fealty be more viable, um, to have more options to make sure you're reducing every round and get put into use. But yeah, lady in waiting. Um, so excited about it. Good thing it's loyal because then Danny would have six dupes. <laughs> that's, that's probably why it is loyal. <laughs> Playtesting, they're probably like, wait a second. <laughs> Danny Voltron decks for the win. Uh, all right, you can banner Kraken for Asha, though. Yep, yep. Tyrell Wolf. Tyro, Tyrell Wolf, indeed. Yes. So is that what I think about? They have, just have the ladies that can be thrown in any deck. Mm -hmm. All right, so Lady in Waiting is going back and waiting. All right. I'm excited about this card. So Lady Sansa's Rose. Lady Sansa's Rose is a one-cost event reaction after you win a challenge in which you control a knight character that is attacking or defending alone. That character gains one power. Three power instead if you control a lady character, max one per challenge. This card, I think, is unbelievable, especially at only one uh, gold. Obviously, if you're playing it out of Tyrell, you know the two knights that you would be using. Knight <laughs> of Flowers would be, well, the, he's on the image. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it kind of gives you that huge hint there. <laughs> By the way. <laughs> and his ability makes it so that your opponent can only uh, throw in one defender alone if he's attacking alone. So you know that you're going to pop that off. Plus, you've got Marjorie in the deck. Um, it brings me back to the tournament this week that you streamed when I was watching Carter versus, Carter versus Kevin. Okay. And Carter would have won the game if this card was out already. Oh. Uh, and, and the funny thing is the deck he was playing that he'd been playing here with for a week or two before that had the proxies in for that card okay. and because the tournament didn't have this pack legal that day of he just pulled those out put some other cards <laughs> in so the deck was built for this purpose yep. but uh he had to uh modify it because of the tournament because i mean he he had on the table um knight of flowers if he had this card it would have been great he had marjorie on the table he also had sansa so if you can imagine if he was able to get a challenge off uh with the knight of flowers having this in hand play it and win so he gets the renowned plus three power, um, and then Sansa would stand, and he would have won the game. He would have won the game before Sansa stood. Anyway, <laughs> oh my God! But the game would have been completely over <laughs> at that point, and it would have been a huge power swing. So I think this card is going to be one that we'll see a lot moving forward. And it's non-loyal, so it can be used in other factions. That and from first edition, I know Stark had tons of knights. Mm -hmm. For example, they already have the Tumblestone knights. They're knights. Every faction, most factions right now have a knight, I think, to them. Uh, Sir Davos for Baratheon was a knight. I don't think, I can't think of a Greyjoy knight. I don't think Greyjoys have knights, really, but... Uh, yeah, we're not getting up for that. Yeah, but even just with Sir Loras, just thinking the whole all your strength in one basket kind of idea for... Uh, with the Tyrell strength buffs. Mm -hmm. So you even winning with the Knight of Flowers on defense, throwing him in for that, you know, defense. Because Marjorie gives him the plus three... You could play that uh, event that gives them plus two, these kind of things. And just defend, where you defend to maybe just save your guys from dying. You block the military, you get Renown off them, and then you, you trigger this too. So you can do that on defense. And it's great with um, jousting contests, right. which Tyrell loves that plot. Uh, works with that too. So, I mean, we get more knights, it makes sense. Because it does suck in those matches where you get the Knight of Flowers early and maybe he gets put to the sword or tears of list. Right. Then you don't have them the rest of the game, and then you see this card, and you're going, God damn it. But I think this makes Power Rush more yes. of a thing now. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yep. People might start even playing, it might be janky, but people might start playing some superior claim with yep. it. Zero cost to event. get the extra power. So yep. I think it could be a scary thing when people start to put that yep. together, and there's a couple more knights out to use. 
Yeah. Just not in non oil too, so you can mix it with other houses and the Night of Flowers goes with it too, right? As part of that banner package. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like this kind of explodey effect thing. It's easier, I think. It might be easier to get this going than the Martel Doran's game, Doran's, Doran's name. Game. Yeah, Doran's game. Um, where you try to get that entry, you got a certain round based on certain plots. This you can do it right from round one. Mm -hmm. And or round six or round seven, it's gonna work for you. So, um, yeah, I like it. I want to see some decks use it and piss me off when they uh, win before I want them to. I think of a lot of the cards in this pack that one will probably see the most play. Yeah, right people are gonna try to break that for sure. Yeah, you don't have to really think about anything when you try to include in your deck. So, uh, yeah, Greyjoy needs the knight back. From first edition, they had one character called <laughs> the, knight, the knight, which was their only knight traded character. <laughs> All right, so next we have uh, Emo Apprentice. I mean, Unsworn <laughs> Apprentice. This guy looks like he's the lead singer of some 40. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely some alternative <laughs> band lead singer for sure. Nice little fur jacket going on. Uh, but he's an Unsworn Apprentice. Three cost. No icons. No icons. This is a Martell thing, I thought, but nice watch. Don't they need icons to defend challenges? Don't they? But wait, it's a companion. Uh, it's non-loyal. He's no attachments except weapon, which is a thing in Night's Watch. Uh, and a challenge action. Uh, emo Apprentice gains a challenge icon of your choice until the end of the phase. Limit once per phase. So, what do you think, Mr. Night's Watch defense deck? Well, if Where's Joe, Joe from Cincinnati yeah, in the Joe chat? Come on, why is he not here? Chat. He'd be one nuts right now. Uh, he... Him and I, we've already discussed this card. It's not unique, so you know, getting three of them in your deck means that you've got a free icon spread out there. Basically, whatever icon you're lacking, you can give it to him. If you're worried about uh, stealth, you just add an extra icon of whatever you need on the board. So I think that he's a very good utility card. He's one that's definitely going to be put or slotted into the Wanna super in defensive here? voice over a few cards. Super defensive Night's Watch <laughs> deck. Um, can't really go wrong and. Yeah, it sucks that his cost is three instead of two, but if it was two, he'd be kind of overpowered, I think. Yeah. And it's also nice because he's another card out of Night's Watch that isn't a milk of a coffee threat. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, he's going to sit on the table and he's going to cause trouble until some yeah. target kills him. Unlike in Martell, when you have your Edric or your Nymeria, who we'll get to... When they get milked, they got nothing going on. <laughs> <It's done. laughs> there, you're you're crying. You're crying yeah. a little bit when that happens. This guy, he doesn't worry about that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I like him. I don't know. He's cool. I, I like that hole in the defense deck. I see where those decks crumble is those turns when you're like, if I just had an intrigue icon on the board right now, I would you know be surviving. But the wall is going down. So yeah. this guy can just and it's usually probably intrigue most likely. But I mean. Based on what's happening, you just might draw shit and get all your intrigue and not see any military for a bit, and this mm -hmm. guy helps get you in there. So, just sucks he's not like a builder or a whatever yeah. to help go with that whole search. I just I just saw that he's a he's a companion. So. Yeah, he's just companion. That kind of sucked. When I saw another Night's Watch character, I thought, oh, good, they're gonna give a builder or a steward or something mm -hmm. to go with that that last uh, the whole search your top deck thing from the mm -hmm. uh, last pack, which I don't remember exactly what it does, but it's right. basically tutoring. But people won't play it because there's not enough. Of those traits, so that's true. There's like one or one or two of each. Yeah. Family. So it doesn't really make sense to play it. That's why yeah. a lot of people ask what kind of changes I was making to the deck after the last pack released, and I said I was just using straight core cards because there's no really point <laughs> in adding any of that stuff. Now yeah. this is the banner to Stark. Nice watch you're talking about. Banner to Stark. Oh, yeah. Okay. So Joe is developing banner to the Sun. Yeah, Martin. that's what uh, Jeff from here plays. Uh, in our meta, he's been mixing around some stuff, and I remember Joe saw him playing that on stream and said, ooh, this looks juicy, mm -hmm. and he was already uh, proxying in some of the cards like Nymeria and stuff, yep. so taking away icons, when you need icons to block unopposed challenges, I mean, you're worried about a stealth character across the board and you can steal an icon, that's a, that's a good little combo. We'll, we'll, just, get, we'll have more on that <laughs> shortly. I just don't know how you're going to do it with no money out of Night's Watch. Just kind of that's true. And he took his meager contributions out. I said not to. What? He took them out. What? Terrible idea. But how's he going to say meager contributions, <laughs> sir? With I think that's English the reason accent. why he took it out, because he uh, told him that's the rule. Damn. you got to say it if you want to play you it. You have to say it. <laughs> All right. So next this we card, have bookmark. Brandon's gift. We're gonna skip this one. Throner is saying it's a bookmark. <laughs> He's saying it's a bookmark already. Two cost location. Brandon's gift. The North reaction after you marshal a builder character. Reduce the cost of the next Night's Watch card you marshal this phase by one. Limit three times per phase. There's only one builder out of Night's Watch right now. 
Uh, and what's what's his title? What card is it? The Shorn? veteran builder. The veteran builder. <laughs> <laughs> Who is hella expensive? Well, he's not. He's okay for what he does to keep what the wall. He? He's four bucks three strength or three three bucks four strength. I forget. I think he's four three. Four three probably four because three. he has that stupid ability to stand the wall. He's right? just there to stand the wall. So he's the only builder that you would play to reduce by one. I mean, you drop four bucks on this guy. And then you get to play the Unsworn Apprentice for two, but would you really have that much money in a turn? <laughs> I don't think so. Ever. <laughs> yeah. So for me, this card is It's is, economy though. In a faction that is hurting for economy. Yeah. Sort of. I mean they have the cheaper characters out of any house, I think. Mm -hmm. I just don't think that there's enough cheap builders. If they have a builder come out in the next pack. That's what I mean. Like, why isn't this guy not a builder? Why is he not a builder? That'd be super cool. Who put these cards together in this pack? Well, as long as he's not a ranger. If he's not a ranger, that's fine. If he was a ranger, yeah, that's true, true, true. Much. But, yeah, that's true. They just need to give some more builders, I think, and maybe a steward or two. All right. So that was that. I got nothing to really say about that. I just think it, it, it's potential. But well, right now, it's either a bookmark or going in the spokes of your bike. You know? <laughs> yeah, you just hook it in the spokes of your bike. You get that cool sound right around your neighborhood. That's what cool kids do. They okay, need to start a quick fire. Yeah, you just start a flyer, run out of toilet paper, whatever you gotta do. <laughs> whatever you gotta do. Alright. Royal Entourage. This is a two cost Baratheon character with a military and power icon. Uh, three strength. It is non loyal. It's an ally. It has a forced reaction. After you lose an intrigue challenge, you kneel this bastard. So, what do you think? Um, It's funny. For me, most people probably think that's a terrible thing, uh, but it's a two cost for three strength Bicon. Which is one more strength than their other little Bicon weenie guy, uh, right. Bastard in Hiding, right? Right, and it might looks like it's it would be a terrible card because you do often lose an entry challenge, but you got to remember that you lose do an they, intrigue. Do they benefit from having cards you lose an at all? And now is there a benefit to that? Robert's just like, yes, <laughs> let's keep losing some more. You throw these guys Especially in. Especially when you go second, right? And you're yeah. like, yeah, 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 you win the intrigue, sure. <laughs> yep. Kneel them all. So your opponent's like, well, do I really want to win this intrigue now? I don't know if I want to win it and give Robert yep. plus two. Or so plus then it makes them even. start thinking about which order do I do my challenges in? And then right. they start, you start restricting their decisions, right? Mm -hmm. And make them make mistakes by putting the pressure on them. I like it. Two bucks. For a card that you probably just use for claim soak anyway, yep. um, does he just replace your bastard in hidings? Do in a deck where you want a lower curve, mm -hmm. now you just have more options. Uh, you can banner these. So I'm looking at it as like if for some reason I ever want to banner to the stag in the decks I like to play, like the houses, sorry, I like to play like uh, Martel or Lannister. Mm -hmm. I have intrigue icons up the yin yang. I know I can steal icons with the Martel stuff. So I probably don't lose Intrigue Challenges that often. So, I mean, bannering this guy into a house that's like laughing on Intrigue. Two bucks. Yeah. Three strength. The Three two strength. icons I'm hurting on. Like, I don't know. It might be good in that situation. I think it's a solid card. Yeah, it's solid for sure. I think he'll get a lot of play. I think Bastard in Hiding won't, won't be seen as much. Or he'll just be seen alongside of him just to give more options uh, for cheaper characters. And he's also an ally, so I'm starting to feel like... There's going to be a card that blows up. All oh, the yeah. Every so. fantasy flight. Card yeah. game, <laughs> the ally trade, they trickle it in. They make you feel like they're the greatest cards in the world. And then they bring up some stupid effect that just starts smacking them around <laughs> and hurting you. So, yeah, don't don't bring in too many allies. They'll backstab you down the road. That's for sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, the next one is In the Name of Your King. I think you read this one, yeah. Yep. One cost event in the name of your king. Play only during a military challenge in which you are the defending player. Action. Kneel your faction card to end this challenge with no winner or loser. Until the end of the phase, you cannot initiate military challenges. Before I let Rob in on this, that great builder's deck is going to have this card in it. And it's going to oh, be yeah. very frustrating for a lot of people. <laughs> uh, for those that aren't familiar, Great Builders is the Nightwatch Baratheon mix that uses the wall and the painted table and uh, the Iron Throne, all those things that are just very, very frustrating to deal with. Because the deck doesn't initiate challenges anyways, he's just going <laughs> to He's gonna play this card and just laugh and say, okay, I can initiate military. Uh, Ho-hum. And win the game. So I think... Sounds like a card for a first edition deck. Uh, used <laughs> to like uh, kind of your style a little bit there. It's it's a lovely card, I think. Yeah, um, that's good. I think it, it 
probably is best out of the great builders so far. Um, I don't know if you have. I know what it is. I know what that deck is. Yeah, it's silly. Just stalls, stalls, wins. Yeah, the. Yeah, it's just a whole defensive win with locations thing, right? It's but even worse than the Night's Watch stuff. Yeah, 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 it is. Yeah, it's. I hate Chamber of the Painted Table, man. Anything nice. that helps that card. Oh my goodness. Ah, go away. Frustrating. But it is loyal, so it's going to stay in Baratheon. You have to have Baratheon as primary house. I Playing with Baratheon lately, trying some of that out. Uh, I'm not a Baratheon player by any means, but I've been trying it out. I wish it said Intrigue Challenge, not Military. Because uh, uh, you got Stannis, you got Robert who goes crazy with the military oh, strength. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not so worried. It is nice when you're going second, though, and you can just say... Screw you, I'm not putting anyone in. You win. Well, you don't win, but I'm going to play this. Shut it down. Now all my guys are standing. Your guys are now... I can't do a military challenge. But now I have them for power challenges, which I do care about. Because I want to draw cards off Red Keep. I want to win dominance if I'm playing the Painted Table stuff. Right. So now it's just less reason to kneel my characters. Yours are now. Awesome! <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I like it. It's good. It's great against Greyjoy. That's yeah, for sure. That's why it's great, and I've, I've I've been playing. I play. I've been hit with this card like three times now, and playing with proxies over the last couple of weeks, and uh, it hurts. You're going all in. You put all your guys in. You need to win by five. You got two gold sitting there. You got put to the sword in hand. You're drooling. You're ready to go. You're gonna kill that Melisandre bitch. Send her to her <laughs> grave, and then you're like, ah, all in. You got nothing. I know you have no ambush. You got nothing. I'm gonna win by five. Yes, and then they go. They play it, and you're just like. <laughs> no, and I gotta try to do it next turn, save the two gold, all that, and it's, yeah, it's it's rough. It just helps keep their Melisandres, their Roberts, their stances alive from the put to the swords. That's how I look at it. It's great defense for that. Yeah, I like it. And good night to the uh, sea stone chair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, as I'm saying, Greyjoy's just like sad faced when they they see this. It's just like. Shuts it all down. Like, you don't win. So then you don't win unopposed. So all the unopposed stuff's not, not going it. off. Yeah, that hurts. Oh, Joe from Cincinnati is here now. He's so is Carter. Uh, Alright, it makes Bear Night's Watch even better than the rest of Night's Watch. Main house decks. Uh, that's, that's from a while ago. Okay. Sorry, guys. I wasn't looking at the chat. Alright. Next. We have an awesome card. Yep. I like it. It's Brothel Madam. <laughs> This one's you. Oh yeah. Three cost, Lancer character, intrigue icon, two strength, non-loyal, companion. Reaction after the challenges phase begins, choose a player. That player may give you one gold from his or her gold pool. Until the end of the phase, if that player is not giving you a gold this phase, he or she cannot initiate military challenges right. against you. More anti Greyjoy. Look at this stuff. Awesome. Stupid. <laughs> she is great. I've already been playing around with her. People around this store have already been playing with her. I've seen lots of black and white copies of this card <laughs> before today, and yeah, she's awesome. Just the whole getting you more gold. Not Lancer doesn't need it, no. But those situations where your opponent has to, they see this on the board usually. Unless you go second, you pop it out. They haven't saved any gold. Awesome. The other one it works great with is the the plot where you support clean off support of the faith, where you clean off their gold right at the end of uh, sort of challenges. And the best, my favorite that I thought of was Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, you're taking this, it, it's like, you're just stealing gold, I, I don't know, it's just the whole intrigue, taking away military, ah, just works good. Um, but, yeah, it's just, play, uh, what's the bouncing uh, back yeah, to hand? That's, I was just going to say. Stealing more gold for that is like just overkill, ambushing in the hound, I want to see event, uh, things they do for love. Things they do for love. It's just taking gold from them, so they give you the gold so they can do military. And you're looking, you maybe you've saved four gold. Now they've given you the fifth gold, and you're looking across the table. Now you can bounce an even bigger character. Ah, oh, so good. Just so good. Question for you, though. What happens yep. if you have uh, more than one in play? Is it still just one gold that you pay, or would you pay multiple? Well, it, it just says until the end of the phase where that player is not giving you gold. So as soon as they give one gold, it satisfies all of them, right? Okay. Yeah, because you, you basically just have to satisfy that they've given you a gold. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. And melee. Yeah, and like melee. <laughs> I've heard there's a melee format to this game. I don't know anything about it. But <laughs> What's yeah. that? Know What's that melee? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, it's probably really good at melee. I can just see that you're getting three gold from all your opponents, or yeah, it's pretty cool. 
Hey Kev, uh, you want to you wanna hop in here and have some chats about some cards? Or you can just do it from the peanut gallery? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All tell right. them, tell all your viewers I have to pee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they can hear you. <laughs> Kevin, will, Kevin will jump in after his wash and break. So, uh, all right. Next. Next one up, right? Next one up, sure. Unless you have any more to say about Brothel, madam. I don't. Other than you like the art? You said you like the art, right? <laughs> I've lost to say. Oh, they can't see that. All right. <laughs> you have lots to say. Yeah, Rich, you can hop in here if you want. I can't stop talking about her. <laughs> so this card is finally we get into the Greyjoy stuff. Um, when I watched, or sorry, when I read the article that was teasing this pack, and I saw this picture because it's the same picture from one point. Oh one, yeah, I got very excited. Um, <laughs> five cost character, oh. intrigue, and power icon. He has four strength, <laughs> <laughs> and he's unique. Uh, his name is the Reader. House Harlaw, and he's a lord. Reaction, after you win an unopposed challenge in which a unique Greyjoy character is participating, either draw one card or discard the top three cards from each opponent's deck. Limit once per phase, and this card was designed by the European Joust Champion. 2011 European Joust Champion, Ma Marty Foz Hernandez. It's a pretty sweet name. Yep. But not as sweet as the card itself. The reader... Currently, I would only use him for draw, to be honest, unless my deck had uh, Euron Crow's Eye in it. Mmm. Which, currently Just it does. seeding the discard pile, which is <laughs> always good for that. But I think, I think at this point, it's not really worth it to use your unopposed challenge to discard through at the top of your opponent's deck. We're not playing Netrunner. Deck sizes in this game are very large, so 60 cards. So what's three of it going to do? I mean, And there's not much draw in the game to thin people's decks out that much yet. Right. So this card, I think... It is very expensive to play. I only play one copy of it currently. Um, but for those games when you, you don't see your draw out of Greyjoy, this would be nice to have. And even when you do have the Great Kraken out, now you're able to draw two cards or use this to draw and then carrying the power from the Great Kraken right away rather than have to make that decision and feel like you make the wrong one every time like I do. Uh, and it doesn't have to be the reader that wins the challenge. So as long as he's on the table and you have Asha winning challenges for you unopposed, then you get to trigger that effect. So I think he's pretty good, but I wouldn't go overboard. He's not a character that you really need to dupe. Going back to 1.0 when people would just play one copy. Yeah. They're unique. He's one of those one copy guys that you would just throw out. If you see yeah. him, great. If you don't, you don't really care. Yeah, because in the wildfire situation, you're not going to choose him that. Yeah, over some of the other big guys. He just reads for me. Like, it doesn't really matter. He just reads me. <laughs> <laughs> he just reads. I can't read this. Read this letter for me. Please. Here's another card. I can't read it. <laughs> Yeah, I like him. Five bucks, a little high, little high, but he draws cards, and card draw should cost you some money, I think. Um, but you do have to win on a post challenges, so I like the way it goes with the theme of Greyjoy to do it. He's trying to drive people to that theme, um, which is good. And he's, he's card draw, right? So they've been sticking loyal on every yep. card draw card it's in the cool game, ones. so you're not pulling this guy out of house. Yeah. I just think that the five cost... Especially out of Greyjoy isn't bad because I've hit uh, seven card flops and setup with Greyjoy, including a five cost character. Wow. So yeah, because Iron Fleet scouts and stuff, right? Right. Just so free. I think you see him in your setup hand and you play him out, and then you can play uh, a noble cause to get Ash out at a reduced cost of two, mm -hmm. and it works that way. So yeah. I wouldn't worry about his cost too and much. And he can be reduced by noble cause too. He's a him lord well. too, right? So, and you can play bodyguards on him. He's a lord. Yeah, mm -hmm. just having a lord trait just. Those are the whole lore theme that uh, of some of the cards in the game right now. Right? And he has the intrigue icon that Greyjoy really needs. Oh man, yeah, put that huge. With, with Sirio and huge. Himself. I remember in first edition that intrigue icon being on this guy was so helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's pretty much it. It's good. Yeah, it's nothing more to say. He's just he's great. He's a champ card, so he better be good, right? Mm -hmm. And let's check with the chat here. What do we see? Yeah, the reader replaces Littlefinger and all my Greyjoy fealty. Right. Yeah, that's a good one. Yep, yep. Let's see, all right, nothing else about that card. Makes sense. All right, so all the readers out. And next, you're gonna read this one because it's a great joke card. Uh, I, I prefer not to touch these cards. So <laughs> uh, two cost location, raiding longship. It's another warship, so drown men. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> Challenges action. If you are the first player, kneel raiding longship to choose a defending character without attachments. That character does not contribute its strength to this challenge. Uh, Rob and I discussed this card right before we started streaming, so what I was saying is that I really like it, but I don't like the limitation that you have to be the first player. Um, 
because I don't really care for the high initiative plots currently. Rob feels differently though, so I'll let yeah. him. They're trying. They're trying to get you to do the whole go first with Greyjoy, go for the unopposed challenges. The only problem with that is going first unopposed means there's no nobody defending, which means they're usually not kneeling. Which means when they come back at you as second player, they have all their stuff standing, you've put all your stuff in kneeling, that sucks. Mm -hmm. But with cards like this, they're kneeling, but now I've just said their strength doesn't count. So now going first maybe isn't so bad, you got Kraken's Grasp, you got this. So, not like Balon where he just scares everyone out, but then you have to deal with them coming at you after. Mm -hmm. This, you might actually, with these plus Kraken's Grasp, maybe want to go first more often. But my thing with this deck, maybe... Kevin can yes, Kevin, get in here. Uh, We're gonna bring Kevin in to talk about this card because he's been playing with this card. <laughs> here, what's it over here? What's My thing with the raiding longship is that if I were to play raiding longship, I would take Kraken's Grasp out of my deck because this is something that I can tutor for. I can have it in play and use it all the time versus Kraken's Grasp. You need to draw it as an event. Yeah. So I don't know how you feel about playing both or if you choose one or the other. The current fealty that I was playing was I was doing three Kraken's Grasp and two longship. But that, so that was just basically to force, mostly for Euron, because he's the one that can't get on a post by himself. Yep. So, mm. so that he would he would be reliably able to get it out. Because usually you don't want a tutor for the long shift. You want a tutor for uh, Sea Stone Chair, Great Kraken, Great or Kraken. Iron Throne if you need it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. Hmm. Until you give Euron stealth with Zero. But it's great. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Euron stealth is Serio. I don't know about that card oh, yet. Yeah, we don't know who that guy Just is. Quick going ahead, man. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great for now more reasons to play drone men, because drone men that are actually uh, yeah. eight yeah. power. Yeah. And yeah. they're the they're an army too, right? Yes. So that Muster the Realm plot that came out in the last pack. Mm -hmm. Freezing your claim on a two claim plot in a Greyjoy deck with armies out that are Plus 17 strength. And then you can't do military because that for your king exists. Because <laughs> what or is the name is <laughs> in the name of your king, whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> salty, salty navigator over here. <laughs> Alright, so is that is that all you gotta say about That's this? It. Yeah. It's a good card. Good card though. I think it's a good card. Attachments. Oh, yeah, without, without attachments. attachments. It's, it's very important. That was the other thing oh, that made it. Oh, without made attachments. It. So I remembered why I took it out of my deck completely. Uh, the first player thing, and then again with, without attachments, kind of limits it a lot. Um, the decks that I've been seeing people play, they just toss in a ton of attachments to turn off Greyjoy things, mm -hmm. like the Seasonal yeah. Chair, so like they'll play... And uh, Plaza Punishment damage. too, right? That's right. another defense for that. So too. they'll just, oh wait, I have an extra gold left, let me throw an attachment on this guy, just cause. He already has the icon, but I'm giving him another one. Why are you putting Milk of the Poppy on your own guy, man? <laughs> <laughs> and now you can't see Stone Chair me, so... That also limits the card a lot, I think, where Kraken's grasp, grasp, yes, you need to be the first player, but at least but they attachment or not. But what I found where this card would hurt me is when I'm just trying to block unopposed, I'm putting in little bastard daughters or little weenies, and they don't have attachments on them, usually. Mm -hmm. And that's where it kicked me in the nuts, where I'm just trying to block the unopposed, shut all that shit off, not lose a power for unopposed, and then that goes off, and it's like, yeah, that I can't stop that, so then maybe I don't even put the guy in. Yeah. But... I don't know. Just putting attachment on a guy to try to use him as a defender uh, sucks, man. <laughs> but yeah, it's a way to shut it off. But I'd rather have that out threatening that than not have it in my deck at all. Then versus, well, that's the thing. I think if you have this and it's just out in play versus the thought of maybe I drew a Kraken's Grasp. Yeah, yeah, know. yeah. I would prefer this over that. Yeah, yeah. All the time. But it doesn't replace Iron Fleet Scale. No. no. Definitely not. No, no it does the not. The setup, I have a scout, is just yes, perfect. Exactly. Yep. And with the whole Balon, mm -hmm. raising Balon's strength, oh, so good. Alright, next card. Rakaro. And... I guess I'll read this one. Six cost, Targaryen character. It's a military and power icon, four strength. He's unique. He's non-loyal. He's a blood rider. The Thraki. While you control another blood rider character, Rakaro gains Intimidate. Reaction. After a character is killed to satisfy claim during a challenge you initiated, Ricardo gains one power. Immediate synergy. Yeah. With, you know who. Cal Drogo. Cal who else is the Blood Rider? Who else do we have? No Blood Riders it. currently. Yeah. Ago is coming out in Bulls of the North. Is Cal Drogo not a Blood Rider? No. no. He is just oh, a okay. Rocky Lord. He's right a now. So this guy works with <laughs> Nord. <Nora. laughs> the first part does not blood ride yourself. anybody <laughs> Because the Blood Riders are what his on. Blood Riders are like the, the three guys with him. Yeah. Okay. 
They're his king's card, basically. So we have a card spoil that may work with him, so we don't care about the first part, him gaming. Gaining Intimidate is not going to happen anytime soon, mm -hmm. which sucks. Does this make you more likely to play... Is that card lets you jump into Thraki? I can't remember the name. Is it still Thraki? No, I've got Thraki C. Oh, the Thraki C, something yeah. C. yeah, yeah. I don't think, think so yet, because... There's only two. Because it puts them in, and then you have to three. discard them. So both of the good dots Rocky right now are they getting power on them, so you never want to yeah, discard them. Yeah, that's true. Them. Well, they don't discard, they go back to your hand, right? Do they go? I think it's just back to your hand. might be confusing with uh, Hear Me Roar. Hear Me Roar is discard. Yeah. This one's back to your hand. And I, you wouldn't want to put him back to your hand with power on him, obviously. Yeah, so you wouldn't, you, it wouldn't be good on him, but you might, it might influence you using Caldrogo for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for some reason you'd play Recaro over yeah. Caldrogo. Yeah, I don't know. I like. I, I remember from first edition playing with the Thraki style deck. We had tons of the Thrakis. You can build a whole deck around it. Put in the high claim plots. Go military heavy. Just try to kill your opponent's board. Characters would die all the time, all the time. So it's just basically like kind of a fake renown, half renown. So you play some Winds of Winter. Yep. Yeah. And have Cal out. Oh, because there's no limit on this reaction. Right. So you do. You could get four. In shit, man. Wow. And it's okay. Only, only from Flame, though. All right, I don't care about the first good. part anymore. Yeah. Here's about the Intimidate right now. That no. Just that, I didn't even picture that with the whole two military challenges that two claim. Oh, man. So, I think... Even if you only win one of those military challenges, just getting two power on this guy, like, at that pace. And if you're still doing, like, the whole Smash Bros. <laughs> thing where you have Jamie yep. up, too, for both of those challenges. Yep. Yeah. Which one of our shape. levels was trying <laughs> God, yeah, really good shape. I can see that. Yeah, because I was thinking like he's six costs, so he's in the territory of like I have to build a deck that kind of focuses around him because he's one of my bigger dudes. But yeah, just kind of slot him into that deck. I believe Renee Chuck was not playing Danny at the time. He was just playing. Oh. Correct. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, okay. Dan no Danny in that deck. And Colin. Which, yeah, yeah, I can see that. Hey, you reduce the cost by one. You lower your curve for this beast. Yeah. yeah I like it. Yeah, and you go played with, all the dragons. Go the military no. route. Okay, so this card is great in a Smash Bros deck. I like it. Let's try that. Out. Yeah, I'm trying that out for sure. All right, the next card is everyone who doesn't play Targaryen's most loved card, <laughs> and Targaryen players are trying to scratch that little restriction off the bottom of the card, or white it out and stuff so that people don't <laughs> notice it's there and put more in their deck. Uh, Kev, you want to read this one off? <laughs> okay, so we have um, Crown of Gold, which is a four-cost attachment. It's an item that's terminal. The attached character gains the king trait. That's why everybody loves it. Yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I need sorry, more kings. There's, there's another part here. Uh, oh, there's another part? Uh, oh. Attached character gets minus four strength and is killed if its strength is zero. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> Right. But of course, there's the deck limit of one. Yes, deck Robin limit of video. one. Mm -hmm. People who don't play Targaryen, keep track of this card. If you see two out of the deck, yell judge. <laughs> and punch your opponent in the face. <laughs> Not the first time they play it, even though you want to. <laughs> the second time you see it. Uh, who was it? Sean. Sean was saying, as soon as he saw this card, was like, I'm going to put Rebuilding in my Targaryen deck. Yep. Just, just take, not just this card, but like, Dracarys. Mm -hmm. When you have two or three done, the opponent's always like, Oh, I've seen two go away. I'm good. I'm good. I can relax. <laughs> I, I'm all right. But no, when they take that, this, and whatever, and shuffle them back in their deck, now you're now you're still guessing for the rest of the game. Yeah. So trying to get around that deck limit of one. Mm -hmm. But at four bucks, four bucks is expensive. It it is fealty playable. So it's, it can be three if you're playing it in a, in a targ fealty deck. But just attaching this to a character and they're minus four strength and they're killed if they're zero. So playing burn, I played burn in first edition. Mm -hmm. I built lots of burn decks, played it. Uh, sticking this on the character, so sticking this on, let's say Tywin, mm -hmm. he is minus four strength and killed if he's ever zero. So he's six strength. So putting this on him right away during plot phase, uh, during any phase where there's no gold out, he is minus four and he's zero. So he is two away from dying. That's awesome. So you have effects like Danny standing, Danny standing, and he participates. Now he's down to one. <laughs> okay, you got Plaza dancing around that can just take the other two away. You have Dracarys. You have Unsullied when they're attacking. They're minus, and Unsullied can go together and stack. So just sticking this on a big dude makes me go, ah, oh, fuck. What am I gonna do with this guy now? Well, I'm scared. He's I don't... a king now. So he's... oh, he's a king. <laughs> 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 he's balling. 
<laughs> He's got a crown of gold. Yeah, but uh, I just love the fact that you sit this even if even if you don't just do the insta kill. Mm. Even if you don't just stick it on Melisandre, Melisandre dead. See ya. You just stick it on their big dude. The Robert Baratheon. Make him a king again. Do <laughs> a double king. Just sticking this on him to make them go, oh shit, now I gotta keep calculating what his strengths at. Mm -hmm. Should I put him in the challenge? Should I just Man, I need to put him in the challenge because I have to win this power challenge to make sure Plaza doesn't kill him or you know, stuff like that. You gotta you gotta start playing those games. It uh, is it is game changing, but I'm uh, not because of the deck limit. I'm yeah, it's not just one about time. It. And it's four bucks. So that turn when they do it, it's like, yeah, they just basically blew their whole marshalling to do to kill one of your characters. Unless they did it on a turn where they played trading with Pentoshi. Trading with Pentoshi. Uh, <laughs> Never heard of it. Does Plaza of Punishment say no attachments? Plaza of Punishment uh, is no attachments. Is it? Oh, yes. Right yes, okay, it yeah. is. It is. Okay, thank you. So just Jakar is unsullied. All right, thank you guys. Unsullied. Thank you, chat. You guys rock. Enough, though. There's still three other cards. Yep. Mm -hmm. Three other cards right now. I'm sure there's more. I'm sure there'll be more. But yeah, still sucks. Either way, it's an insta kill on like Tyrion. Yes. Uh, when it's killing five cross characters that are yeah. game changing. It's yeah, you're paying less. Yeah. So we, can, we need a card that gives like the no attachments keyword to people. <laughs> or just make good use of those widow's whales right away. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Like, that's true. Don't hold that stuff in your hand. Yeah, I've made that mistake before. It cost me a game from just not putting the widow's whale out before a Jakar hit me. Alright, so what else we got? Like your crown. Like crown, your own guy. Play them twice. Yeah, they're talking about. Oh, a synergy off the off King's King trait Troy. with King's Hunting Party? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> no. You janky players. <laughs> All right. Um, Next card. The guy, Patrick, said, Patrick Haynes says, let Rob know it's me. me. Oh, I know what I did wrong. I think I've been mixing. Like my, my oh, they're mixing. Deck. I mixed the piles. Uh, yeah, I did. I did maybe put some Nymerias in some decks, but I pulled one out. All right. So this card, Nymeria. She is a... Martell card, five cost, character, four strength, unique, non loyal, bastard, and sand snake. She has a text challenge action. Choose an opponent's character until the end of the phase. That character loses a challenge icon of your choice, and each sand snake character you control gains that challenge icon. Limit once per phase. I love it. I saw this and just, yeah, this pack. Just made me giddy from this card alone. I love icon removal. I like how there's no I need to use that little maester to try to Maester Caliot to try to oh which challenge do I do? Do I is he gonna defend that one or that one? I need him to lose so I can take away the icon because I'm holding a tears of list. But he now knows I do that, so he's probably just gonna let it go in a post. No. With this card, it's just challenges started. Do you have any actions? I have an action. <laughs> Boom! Time. I'll take his icon. Mm -hmm. The only thing is, I like taking icons off of uh, the intrigue icon off characters to do this use of the list. Tywin is obviously my favorite for target for that, but she is susceptible because she's a character ability to treacheries. Yep. But seeing a treachery get burned from me trying to trigger this is kind of good. I'd rather this be cancelled because it doesn't stop the ability forever. I'm going to be able to do it next phase. She's sitting in play. So it's not like the treacheries that happen when you go to like burn a Gaston Grey and they cancel that and Gaston Grey is gone. Yeah. Or varies and he's out of game and they've canceled that and you're crying. This it's like, oh, you canceled it this round. <laughs> I'll get you next round. Or I'll just use confinement this turn instead. Yeah, I'll just use confinement. <laughs> so yeah, just another way to steal icons with that whole synergy, Tears of Liz. Uh, I like the synergies. I'll let you talk about how it would go in a Greyjoy deck. But... Any kind of control, like stealth, uh, kneel, icon removal, goes great with those to kind of just thin the options down. Even Night's Watch, yeah. stealing away icons to try to make sure you win that unopposed challenges to remove icons from the ones, like say you're staring at someone with stealth across the table and you're worried about them stealthing through military because you only have one military icon. Well, not only can you steal the military off that character, you give it to her plus your other sand snakes. So now you're definitely blocking that military challenge, stopping the unopposed or whatever in a Night's Watch deck. But yeah, what do you think? I think that's huge. Out of the Night's Watch deck, I think it's going to be uh, very difficult to deal with. Um, 
again, when you're worried about stealth, you have Bastard's Daughters out, they're gonna get out very cheaply. She steals an icon and gives it to everybody, so you're not worried about stealth anymore. You're yeah. still worried about Balin, but Balin, whatever, everybody's yeah. worried about him, yeah, I yeah. think. Um, so, ultimate utility card for any faction that you put Martell into. And I think that's why people were joking in the chat a couple days ago about how after this pack releases, it'll just be, what house am I playing? Let me add Sun yep. to it for everything. Because yeah. of how strong everything that they have currently is in terms of limiting your opponent's uh, options and decisions. Yep. In Greyjoy, I'm using it again to couple with Serio, obviously. Yeah. Um, oh, and then man. because I play the tiers of least two, that makes it a lot easier to, to fire that off. So <laughs> I think that even with the cost of five, or five cost to me in this game currently is, is nothing. It's whatever. Yep. And she's not a lord or a lady, so you can't use noble cause, but there are other ways to get her out, as we'll see with the next card that makes it kind of easy to get gold whenever you really need it. So. <laughs> Kev, yeah, what do you think about Nymeria? Uh, nothing really to add. Yeah, just the cost is she might be the only thing you're playing that turn, which is fine. And you might not want to fit her into decks you were playing previously. You might have to rework yeah. what yeah. your current curve yeah. is, which is a problem with lots of fives, which are there are a couple in this pack. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That. the reader trying to get her in yeah. and serial all yeah. fives. Yeah. Yeah, we were six. Uh, I, uh, we were five, yeah. okay, I also five. like the synergy with the whole little bird serials trainings and stuff that you might put in a deck with her with Edric. Yep. So now you have targets for those on Edric and her. If you don't want to, if your the ability gets becomes a problem, you can still make do something. The only problem, like with Edric, when she gets milk of the poppy, yeah, it's yeah. not good. You're but not that's happy. Why you play her out of Grey Joy because you can get rid of those attachments. Easy. Oh yeah, and there's still conf uh, or maybe a, maybe out of Baratheon with Maester Crescent right, or Viserys right. out of Targaryen. So like there are ways to get rid of attachments, and plus the plot, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's not that bad, but it does suck if, like, if you guys are saying you spend your whole five gold that turn, pop her out, and they go and Action. boink! <laughs> then you're just like, God damn it! <laughs> I basically played nothing this round. Yeah. Okay, go. Um, but yeah, let's see what we got in the chat here. Uh, I put I put Martel also into Greyjoy. Fucking good. Dawn plus Balon, question mark. Yep. Uh, Let's see. Oh, Patrick Haynes is in here. Hey, Patrick. How you doing, buddy? Uh, offensive Caliot and Dornish somewhat. we will get shit done without it. Offensive Caliot is hilarious. Paramore and raiding is super fun. Yeah, I can see that. Mm -hmm. Pulling people in to the raiding. <laughs> God damn it. Greyjoy and Martell with this stuff. It just got me excited. Got me excited. Because I love Greyjoy. I love the stealth. I love stealth keywords. It's one of my favorite keywords. This, this will work good with that. Um, oh, one thing though, about the going back to the milk, I kind of enjoy when I play a card like this and my opponent feel that they need to milk that instead oh, of the other thing. True, true. So Especially when we're talking about just, for example, putting in Balon, Asha, Euron, maybe, <laughs> and her. And they're milking her out of those. Yeah, and you're just like, okay. Cool, whatever. cool, bro. <laughs> I got these guys still. And if they don't milk her, then yeah. okay. It's one of those cards that's like her. annoying. But when it becomes milk bait, you're like, that's awesome. Yeah, one less to worry about. Yeah, really. that's true. Especially when you remove it. All right, so uh, let's go to the next card, which is... You got the Martell shirt, so... Where the hell is... It? Oh, right here. In Doran's name. Whoop. Need money? Yeah. So In Doran's name is a zero-cost Martell event. Uh, it has an action. Kneel your faction card to gain X gold. X is the number of plot cards in your used pile. So, basically, it's kind of like Doran's game. You're waiting till it gets later in the game to do its effect, to, to get the most value out of the effect. I didn't know where you were. Helps, you, helps you just blast gold if you need it to do something crazy. But it's I, not loyal. That's what scares me. Yeah. This, this working with like things they do for love and stuff like that I don't know I, I don't know if I play this card to be honest do I need the economy that much and I'm worried when will I see this it's zero cost hands of judgments kills it yep. but if someone hands of judgments this I'm, I'm kind of like yeah cool mm -hmm. but if you're, if you're building around this and you're relying on that gold at that time it is an action that can be done any phase though mm -hmm. so I don't think it's a card that you would rely on I'm thinking back to I think 1.0 plunder plunder uh, yeah plunder. yeah yeah um for me, this card though, I would probably probably play it turn three, so you're getting at least two out of it. I think that would be the sweet spot. Yep. Turn three or later, 
Um, Except for turn seven, which is zero again because <laughs> you have nothing in your use plot. Yeah, pile. yeah, you but it's just that. it's a nice card for especially this pack with all these high cost characters that are, that have come out. It just gives you an option to get them out True. a little bit quicker. And we're talking about Nymeria needing to rework your gold curve. Yeah. So it just it's already hard enough to fit these in because I feel like a lot of the decks right now are very limited on deck space. But if you can fit even one copy and that might help you. The other the other thing it works with too in the last pa pack, uh, long plan. Yeah. So you can play this on the long plan turn if you don't have any reason to use gold now. And save it. Just to give you like you just get that gold you already have, you get this gold, it's overkill, mm -hmm. but then you can play something like counting coppers the next turn mm -hmm. and you have this gold left over plus any door, uh, gold you gained off the long plans ability. It just kinda goes with that I guess. Kevin, what do you think? Uh, my first thought when I see it is that it will be great with with Lannister because of Ambush, or oh, yes. in the future with more Ambush cards coming out in Martell. Or because it's like hidden gold in your hand. Yes. So they don't see it sitting on your plot. So they so ask if you're sitting you, on zero and it's turn four, and you say I'm going to yeah. endorse name and then Ario Hota, then they'll probably or do frowning. Put to the swords. Or put to the swords. Yeah, man. When they don't know you have a put to the sword in hand, mm -hmm. they ask you no gold. No, what? you're putting five strength in. Yeah, I'll go on a pose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, action. I'm gonna gain a few gold. Boom, put to the sword. Yeah. And I think also Sneaky. Sneaky. If, you're, if you're thinking that a lot of people are gonna be playing trading from Fantoshi or uh, marching orders or whatever, then you're now able to play naval superiority and not worry about that reduced mm. gold. You play this card, you're back up. And mm. if you miss their kingdom, you're not really too worried because at least you don't lose out that much. You're playing a blank plot essentially, but you still get money. So I think. That'll yes. increase the amount of naval superiority zip that we see moving forward. Nice. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's uh, Indorn's name. Let's see if anyone says anything. Supporting the faith! Exclamation point. Uh, great card after turn three. Yeah, or great wildfire. card after turn three or four wildfire. Yeah. Yep. To just flood the board again, assuming you have the card draw to support that. Long plan plus this. Yep. Guess you wait till the turn after long plan. Get more gold that way. Yeah, but it gives you that uh, the flexibility of during the long plan. You can pay the turn of long plan or the next turn. You're still going to have that gold either way. So it makes the card not too situational. All right. Next is this awesome sauce. Strong. All right. Kevin, you want to read this one? Do you have the... I don't have my deck yet. Uh, okay, so we have uh, Serio Pharrell, who is a five cost neutral card. He has a military icon and he is a companion. Uh, he's three strength with stealth, and he has a challenge's action to choose a character until the end of phase. They also gain a military icon and stealth, but that's limited once per phase. Yeah. This fixes. For anyone that's ever milked my, my Edric Dane on the table, yes! <laughs> this is for you. I'm, I can't wait to put this card in and be like, you milked him? Fine. Give himself back, or like they're just staying with Nymeria too, right? Right. So he makes everybody useful, even after milk. You could put on like a little. Let's say milk him. Let's <laughs> but hey, if they milk him, and they're not. Milking then they're not milking her. Or they're, if you yeah, even yeah. get to afford all those characters, I mean, we're talking about a perfect world here. Yeah, we'll true. Six five cost guys. But later there. in the game, seeing yeah. if you you lower your curve a bit, now you got some. Good five costumes that are hitting pretty hard. And he's also not a Lord or Lady, so you can't reduce him. And he, you can't use any house reducers because he's neutral. True, so there's true, all true. those things you got to consider when you play him, but it's just like playing Varus, I guess. Okay. We all figure out a way to get him on the table, so yep. we figure out a way to get him out too. And it's more stealth. It's stealth for the houses that don't have stealth. Mm -hmm. Now they have an option. They have a stealth character that any house can pull it in. And they, or you, Greyjoy just gets overkill on stealth. So you can... <laughs> <laughs> that just drives me nuts. Need more. So right away I see this card, I'm thinking like, oh great, I can put this in my deck, so now Greyjoy is unopposed stuff. Mm -hmm. Less chance of that going off because I can play defensive stealth, basically, mm -hmm. so you can't stealth by my stealth characters. Or this gives me more stealth to break through those Night's Watch decks yeah. to, to bring the wall down. But then I was like, but shit, this, those decks have access to this also. <laughs> so now they're going to put this in, so me getting this, nah, it's just kind of balancing everything out. It's, it's I really like him for Mace or Windermere. Mace or Windermere, I've always felt limited by him if I wasn't able to get a uh, little bird on him. But even if oh, I already okay. get him military, you already have stealth obviously, but just getting him that military icon gives him a little bit more utility. Yeah, it just makes your monocons just that much better, right? Yeah. some value into your other, other characters. Yeah, uh, he's definitely flexible. One of the big things is on his using his ability on characters that can do multiple challenges in a phase. Oh, so yes. your Jamie's or 
yes. things that don't get stealth. Jamie so. with stealth. Ugh. Yeah, I, the stealth keyword is just what made me excited. Yeah. Given the icon ways, like awesome in Martell and stuff, that you have these characters without icons, like you're saying, but yeah, that's stealth. Just I'll give stealth to this character I need to do an important challenge with. You know, I have Game of Thrones plot out, which is a plot I love to play. Just throw the stealth on a character with intrigue so you know you can push through that challenge or stop your opponent from winning that challenge because now they can't stealth by you with their Tyrion or whatever. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just oh, so good. So good. Just get that challenge through you need to get through, which challenges win you the game. Unless you're playing that builder stack we are talking about. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> or you just get to sit back. Yeah, and really powerful ability, agreed. Not unbalanced, just real good. Sir has a powerful ability, but it's five cost and no noble cost for him. Make him pretty balanced card. Yep, one copy in almost every deck forever. Yes, Patrick. Yes. Got one. Just and one. how many do you have? Uh, I haven't put him in a deck of testing yet. But I've had some for tonight, but okay. so far. Yeah, so we should see him on the stream later. That's for sure. Everyone seems to like him. All right. I don't know who you just read Serial, right? Yes. Uh, I'll read Shadow Black shirt. Sure. Uh, one cost location, unique, Shadow Black Lane. King's Landing traded. Reaction after you win an intrigue challenge. Kneel your faction card to search the top ten cards of your deck for an in faction event. Reveal it. Add it to your hand. Then shuffle your deck. Kev, what do you think, buddy? So it's good in a few factions right now, other ones it's it's behind, just because either they're not big on intrigue or they don't have uh, multiple infection events that you want to keep in the same deck. True. So what factions do you think of right away when you so see this card? Targaryen's the first one that comes to my mind, because all three of its events are playable in PLT, yeah, in the big deck, uh, and it can win Intrigue fairly consistently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah! I hate Targ events. Uh, the one thing is it obviously takes away your, the, the surprise the, It takes factor, away the right? surprise, but uh, any opponent should be expecting them regardless. It also takes True. away the... I mean, for me, my tip off would be that they didn't use their fealty in marshalling, maybe. Although, but not that is one thing: is this has Neil yeah, faction you got a Neil your faction card to do this. Yeah, so you know they're gonna do one or the other, right? Yeah. So when their fealty standing, yeah. But it's, it might be tough in Targ too, because like that fealty I see stood a lot to save for the Jakaris. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like if they're kneeling it for that, and they have no gold left, then you know, okay, they're not gonna get it off. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know. It's still, there are some of them in their hand. That's the other thing with cards like this, and just seeing like with uh, uh, what's the search event from Tyrell that you, they win and then they search. Is Olen is cunning. They search, and in that same reaction window, they get what they search. Then they play that card, and then the reaction off that card, they do that, and are just like reacting, reacting, reacting. This kind of has that same ability, yep. where you could do the same where you win the challenge you react you pull the event and you possibly could get that event off mm -hmm. i don't know how many events right now exist that you're doing that with but i just know down the road I'm thinking first edition the same window you mean like same yeah window. okay so like you get the benefit right away like i search top 10 perfect i just won an entry challenge i have this event that says after you win entry blah 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 i play that just cards i'm sure will come out that interact more with that i was thinking more like to pull the support of the people or something yep yep but Which it's in on, faction. Just, it's yeah. in faction events. So those neutral events. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. So Tears of Bliss is not. Yeah, you could. You want to grab it. It makes sense, but it's like you can't. That makes sense. It's not faction. So that's why he was saying it's the houses that you're playing. You look at your event stack, and it's like, oh, they're all in-house events. I have nine of them in my deck. Mm -hmm. It's eleven or whatever events you play. Uh, it lets you. It's card draw basically, and you're pulling those events out, which then helps your top decks later in the game because you're pulling out events out of your deck yeah so you're more likely to draw your characters and stuff it just thins your deck down i think it's basically card draw yeah. mm -hmm. card draw is good just sucks when you miss on it obviously but yes that's why you gotta be careful and make sure you're playing it in a faction that you have lots of in-house events yeah. i like it i like it i'm trying it in lannister it's great for uh martell we're talking about whole doran's game and doran's name pulling them at the right time yep you have to do it with so many plots played this lets you make sure you see it when you need to see it kind of like it, it increases those odds i guess yep yeah i don't know i don't know that i played on play that's just me yeah. i don't know if i would currently because there are so many other locations to pick from yeah. like yeah. i don't think that, that true you really need yet yeah, I don't think maybe do a one of though maybe a one of mm -hmm. it's one gold it's unique 
It's just like, maybe you'll get some card draw. That's how I look at it, as if, you know, I have 10, 11, any, any deck that's playing like nine events or more, maybe, or nine or less, sorry, maybe not. But more than that, I, I might just because I'll most likely see an in-house event. But yeah, as we see more faction events, it'll definitely yeah, that's be the problem. There's not enough events to really do that yet. Yep. But you know they'll get there. They'll get there for sure. Um, Shadow Black Lane is looking good in Tyrell, Targaryen, and Martell. Also in Baratheon, if you could win intrigue challenges, says uh, Matastrophic here. Uh, yeah, Barry uses a lot of in-faction events, and if you're going intrigue heavy, you can find them in the name of your king. Uh -huh. Remember that you have to kneel your house card. Ah, oh, crap. So not so good. <laughs> That's what the chat is saying. You guys are awesome. Next time I need to get the chat on the screen so we can all review the card together. Uh, all right. So now I got to do some trickery here because I'm going to put this in sideways. Flip it. And then I'm going to go here. Let's see if I can do this right. Transform. Oh, yeah. And let's, yeah, that should be okay. Yeah, you guys can see that, okay? Hey, Kevin's still there. Yeah. Kevin's there. <laughs> I think my face will be cut a little, but that is okay. You guys see it enough, I'm sure. All right. Uh, Shamari, you want to read this one? Yep. Uh, Wardens of the West, five gold, four initiative, and one claim. It is Lannister only loyal sorry loyal yeah reaction after you win an intrigue challenge pay two gold to have the losing opponent choose and discard two cards from his or her hand um brothel what's it called the brothel brothel madam brothel madam <laughs> pay oh for yeah that. Just yeah more gold for this Tyrion yep. pays for it automatically off that set intrigue challenge that you yeah he gets the gold it. before that even this even happens or one because it triggers twice so there's just so many ways to use this card already and i'm, I'm <sighs> dreading it I'm dreading seeing this when I'm playing Greyjoy because of how hard it is. Well, I mean, out of out of Greyjoy's son, Intrigue isn't too bad anymore. But even still, um, when you have that plus the Lannister locations out, plus you have uh, Cersei out, you're losing a lot of cards very quickly. And I think that puts Lannister at a very very heavy or high card advantage in one turn. So. Immediately, it kind of sucks to lose all of those options out of your hand right away, and they can pay for it so easily. I mean, it would be yeah. different if yeah. if it was a struggle for them to pay for this. If this was like a three gold plot, then you'd be like, okay, then yeah. they might not have the money lying around. It's five; but... they're already gonna have tier out, and you know they're gonna have gold bonuses out on the board. So this is gonna pop off because they're going to win intrigue. Like I, I, for me, I just think that the, the stats on this one are a little bit off. Maybe I'm just a Lannister hater. Yeah, <laughs> but I, yeah, I can I understand. No, I no, no, I understand. Like the initiative. Is for whatever. I still think that could be like a three, and the goal could be a three as well. That's just me. So and I just this card frustrated. When I saw that one, I got kind of upset, and Tim had all these ideas about it, and it just made me even more mad. I think so. when they put Taiwan on on the art of a card, it's going to be a high goal. <laughs> yeah. What what I know from this plot, I, I we, we've been playing with proxies. You guys have seen that on our live streams uh, from the last couple weeks. We we're playing with them. Uh, I instantly printed three of these, put them in three Lancer decks I had built and was just like swapped out a plot to try it and playing with it, here's the reality on it. Seeing it first, the stats are amazing. It's one initiative better than combo Westeros. It's a scheme, so it's like a great starter because it doesn't get hit by naval superiority, but it's 5-4-1, so it's just that much chance of you winning initiative, that much more chance of you win initiative. It, six reserve, the reserve is when I saw that six reserve, I was like, shit. I'd be saving gold to do this effect, possibly in worst case scenario, which means I'll have more cards in hand because I haven't played as much this round, but it's got six reserve. If it had five, I think it'd be more balanced, yep. but the six is a little crazy. That's when I, when I look five, four, one, I expected to see like with the ability of five, but yeah. <laughs> Here's the reality though. You open with this. You now, ha you might not always have Tyrion. You might not have set up Tywin or have Tywin out. So you might not have the gold. And I find in some situations I'm opening with this, it's a high gold plot. But I need characters on the board if I'm facing a military heavy deck, like a Stark deck, uh, Targ, or uh, Greyjoy, or whatever. I need Claim Soak out there. I may not have set up enough. I may need to get a character out. So I'm playing the five gold, and it, let's say I don't have Tyrion yet. I might not even have the gold lying around to open with this. So then, I started realizing when I play this early, economy lying around is not as easy as later in the game. The problem with this card is, and you're playing Tar uh, Lannister, 
I usually find that the opponent's down to so few cards in hand, when you play this on turn four or five or three or whatever, I put it out, I look over at my opponent, they maybe only have two or three cards at marshalling, they put one or two of them in play, they only save one card behind because I've had Cersei destroying their hand, or just me winning Intrigue and them not really drawing. They're down to no cards anyway, so half the time this ability is not going off. I, in maybe ten games playing with this plot, let's say, I've had it go off where it was really great, maybe in one or two of those games, where second turn, third turn, they had a handful of cards, they did an entry at me, I, they didn't realize this worked on defense, so most people are going to catch on to that. This does work on defense, guys, so you can get this off a couple times, and when you get the Tyrion going, Perfect Storm, which I've only seen happen really once, they win an Intrigue, I go, okay, cool beans, I'll spend two gold, because I just got it with Tyrion, I'll spend two gold, you take two cards out of your hand, yep. okay, now they go down to maybe three cards, now I do Intrigue at them, and they go down two cards, and then I grab the last one with Claim. Perfect Storm, mm -hmm. doesn't usually happen, it doesn't hit that hard. I but. understand that, and I could see that as well, but the thing with that is, even if you don't hit it, you, you don't lose, there's no consequence. That's true, there's no downside. Gold. So the extra gold is for my things I do for love later in the game when I'm like, oh, that five gold I didn't need. <laughs> I have <laughs> time out already, money, money lenders, six whatever. Cards, yeah. You still have the, the initiative. So yep. like, you you can't get punished for playing this card on the wrong turn. Yeah, I don't see why this doesn't go in every Lanny deck. Like, why not? It's Whereas, see, here's, I compare this to the Greyjoy equivalent. So the, the Greyjoy... 282... Uh, Rise of the Kraken. Rise of the Kraken. Rise of the Kraken. Yep. So that card, you play it, and then your opponent marshals so much stuff, you can't get unopposed, you lose, because you don't have money. Well, you don't lose the game, obviously, but you lose no. on that train. Yep. So you don't have money, you're, you're not triggering this, it sucks. This card, you play it on yeah, wrong like, turn, five gold still, whatever. Yeah. I'm still probably yep. going to choose who goes first. Yep. I'm still going to get claim on everything else, and then I get to keep my mythical cards, too. Yep. And then the Greyjoy one is like, damn it, I can't do anything this turn. So yeah. I think that... I'm not saying the plot's bad, I was just saying the ability, I'm not saying it it's bad. looks I don't so juicy, it's bad. but it's kind of situational and like, it's sometimes overkill. Mm -hmm. I find it's like a win more ability, but the stat line is so good, it makes it just good, like in general, and there's no situation you don't want. And that's what I mean, gold. I just feel like in the game, the way that they have it yeah. set up so far is, the other plots that you play, when you play it on the wrong turn, you get punished. You get hurt for it, yeah. This one, and there's no hurt. Whatever, I play it. If it no hits hurt. great, if it doesn't, nope. awesome, because I'm still good. Yep, like, doesn't, doesn't get hit by Naval Spear already, so <laughs> yeah. it's like, whatever. <laughs> so I, I I agree, it's, it's a plot that is streaky, yeah. but I don't see why you wouldn't include it. Yeah, You have no reason not it to. It synergizes with all Lannister's money generation. What do you think, Kev? Uh, so one thing just, just came up. Uh, it, it, even though it doesn't really seem like it on the card, it... it really depends on the board state and what the matchup is mm -hmm. because you don't necessarily need to be doing it overkill with Cersei it can be when you don't have Cersei that's true yeah. that's true way. that's true mm -hmm. yeah that's true I guess it just yeah it makes your intrigue challenges hit that much harder yeah. right if that's the way you want to think about it because they're not going to discard something great yeah. but what they leave in their hand is great so now you're just gonna laugh even more when you pull oh, something out yeah you don't need to <laughs> wait Run for a turn you, but make them discard six cards yeah um, that's true that's true Okay, so the chat is saying, where was they it? They don't like it as much as you. No. They don't like it. Not as much as the wrong. It'll make you, yeah, that's the other thing, is I find it makes my opponent play more of their cards, and not right. keep as many cards in hand, so they puke it out, which makes them more susceptible to varies yes. and wildfire, <laughs> right? <laughs> Rob wants you to do that. Yes! <laughs> play more, my pretty! <laughs> yeah, uh, don't blame Shamar. Tested with the proxy. But it's not so good. Trust me, Rise of the Crack and the Long Plan are better. You seriously need to make to make a how to play video. This channel rocks. Okay, that's not good. <laughs> Thank you though. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I don't think any of the house plots are really comparable. Just because they're so they, they all they're all dependent. They're all focused on their faction. Yeah. So I don't know about comparing it to Rise yeah, of the Crack. Yeah, it's not like, like oh, I'll play Rise of the Kraken over this. Yeah, this. yeah. It's like you're, it's great for your house. I like it. None of them have missed yet. Yeah. You say Rise of the Kraken, oh, blah, but it's it's a it is a great card. When it hits, it's like oh, man. another two flame, <laughs> and you're getting the extra for unopposed. Mm. Oh, rush to the win. It's a great card. Uh, I'm just trying to put the point out there that it, yeah. it misses. It misses I saw somebody was putting. Uh, where is it? I'll go back in the chat here. 
This plus Casterly Rock plus Tyrion plus Cersei equals seven cards discarded. But that's jank, though. You, you, that's like, yeah, yeah perfect storm. <laughs> the max you can get off it is 11 cards discarded. <laughs> if they did two against two entry challenges against um, you. They did one against you. One against lost. you, you do two against them. And they lost against and you. And you have six gold. Yeah. Oh, it's perfect storm. Yeah. And Tyrion can pay for it. But all. with reserve Fine. value, not many people <laughs> yeah, have 11 cards yeah. chilling. But they're going to give max you can get Force your opponent to draw four or something. <laughs> yeah, I can yeah. see it happening very soon. Yeah, it's fun that there's all this like draw in the challenge phase and stuff because it's like, does your opponent want to draw now or after? Or like, do they need to protect what's in their hand and just draw for no reason so that you have more to discard? And one important thing uh, where Rob was mentioning that you could open with this block, you have to remember that they will have nine cards at that time minus what they play and they get to choose which one. So they yes. can easily discard yes. what yeah. they would ideally so it's like, discard. So it's good to hit that like. Turn two, or two three. to three. I like it on turn two best. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I found it's not the best opener. I find I barely ever get to, to go off first round unless you're laughing. You set up Tywin and then you use Tywin's gold plus your noble cause to bring out Tyrion, and you have already a chud in play, and you can pay for another chud, and then you're just laughing the rest of the game. <laughs> but that doesn't happen all the time. Just uh, sorry, the max of the Elena's informant, yeah, informant is 16 cards. The max of the Elena's informant is 16 cards. 20 with two of Elena's informants. <laughs> it is a, yes, it is a good thing that you have that uh, yeah. 20 gold. Tyrion <laughs> and for it all. All right. <laughs> Metastrophic, you need to build this deck and send it to me. We're going to make this happen. <laughs> and someone has to figure out a way to get 20 cards in hand. <laughs> oh my god. Open with this turn two and, and three heads on spikes. What? Oh, turn two and th and turn three do heads on spikes. Oh. Just more and getting... Yeah, because then... They pick up... Well, yeah, they're they the, the randomly getting rid of a character. Uh, yeah, but that's... But, like, they could have zero cards at that point. Well, you know, most likely they're going to discard everything else out of their hand well, but the character. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it just makes yeah. heads on spikes Very that much, to hit that much more. 24 with three Elena's informants. You guys are whack. I love it. All right. Or wacky. Sorry. Not whack. Wacky. All right. Next one. Trading with the Pentoshi. Right, the other way. Oh, I did it wrong. Yep. Whoop, whoop, whoop. All right. Who gets to read this one? All right, go ahead. Or did I do the last one? No, I, I did that one. I did that one. You did that one? Okay, Kevin, you want to read? Sure. Trading we have Toshi? Trading with Pintoshi. It is a 10 goals, 2 initiative, 1 claim plot. It is a kingdom, so it is susceptible to naval superiority. Uh, it has 1 revealed. Each opponent gains 3 goals, <coughs> which cannot be cancelled. And it has a 5 reserve and 1 plot de deck limit of 1. Awesome. So, so make lots of friends in melee. <laughs> What? Nice. All right. Sorry, I was just looking up something here. All right. Uh, let's see. So, uh, yeah. My bad. <laughs> so, what do we think about it? It's a kingdom. Yeah. So, as soon as I saw kingdom, naval superiority. I thought of being hit with naval superiority. Mm -hmm. So, you want to open with this. You see heavy gold. The five reserve kind of makes me scared about playing it first but with 10 gold you're pretty much going to shit out your hand anyway but then if you get hit with naval you've given three gold to your opponent Is that gonna be a five now? who will be up to five on their plot basically five gold just from their plot in this and you're at zero yeah you get nothing mm -hmm. so it's risky i think that currently not that that's worst case scenario though so yep. worst case that happens yep um but i think either this, way yeah if this becomes popular then naval starts sneaking out, right? Mm -hmm. But either way, when you play this card, like it, it's great that you get that ten. Yes, you have ten now. You can play your cards, or whatever. But adding three to whatever your opponent plays, for me, I still don't like that trade off. Like yeah. I want to be the only one to have that advantage. I don't want to yeah. give you an extra three so that you can go play Balin. Yeah. Or oh yeah, Balin yeah, Tyler exactly. Right now. So I think that trade off kind of limits this card. But if you're one of those people that don't care and you have a nice hand with Milk of the Poppy in it, you play this and go second if you can or if they make you go second you get to see what they put out with that three gold and yeah, milk true. it or milk it next turn like true. it gives you it gives you a lot of options i just i 
You uh, said that you would play it, and if you did, you'd play it with uh, I would uh, said if marching I, orders. If I played it, uh, anyone who's crazy enough to play it, I didn't say I would play it. I said if you were to play <laughs> okay. this, and you're worried about naval run around, just make sure you also play marching orders, because there's no way they can hit both. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's no way they can hit both of those crazy gold-ass plots, right? Mm -hmm. So you just start sticking in War Kingdom so you can make up for losing 10 gold. You can have 9 the next turn or whatever. Or if they hit that, you have 10, but then this one gives away 3. I don't know. I just don't like my opponent having 3 gold. I'm sure it'll hurt me. If it, the, only, the only way I see this is in, for me playing Lannister. I love Cersei. I build my decks around Wreck in your hand. Mm -hmm. When I play this later in the game, when you're top decking, and I've given you three extra gold on top of the gold from your plot. I don't care that you have that extra gold. You're probably doing nothing with it anyway. Yeah. Maybe you top decked your big character. Maybe you didn't. The odds of that happening are very rare. It's maybe dead already. Who knows? But I just find playing it then, the three gold doesn't hurt you as much. But then, do I really need ten gold at that point in the game? When I'm a Lannister deck and I've built up so much gold. Yeah. Unless I'm trying to bounce your Robert back to hand <laughs> and I just need that extra gold. I don't know. But mm -hmm. Or they need Tywin to be 38 strength. I don't know, but uh, Kevin, when would you play this? Uh, the main thing that I was thinking was if you have a deterrent from them wanting to use that gold, like if you have Varus on the board already, or if you use oh, this yes. to play Varus and they use their gold to throw extra characters that you're going to run. Yep. But of course, since it has initiative two, they might be wise yeah. on your schemes and yeah. give you the old firsty player. Yeah, mm -hmm. go first, put out Varys. A mill? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, chat. When would you guys play this plot? I don't know. Looking at it, I say no. It seems like a trap. Whenever FFG gives me cards that have insane stats that seem too good to be true, it's usually too good to be true. I mean, it's fun when you're playing casual in your living room with, you know, your friends or your wife, but I, I don't know why I'd put this in a tournament deck. I don't know. Maybe in Melee. Melee. Melee's fun when you're trying to drop the big bomb character. Eventually, when they come out with 10 cost. Larry in the black or some <laughs> dragon you want to drop in and giving them three gold when you know no one else plays big janky characters like that in their decks mm -hmm. then it's funny but I don't know what are they saying have 16 Tywin gigantic Tywin <laughs> yes I got that it just has nice is this good for Night's Watch That's question nice. mark uh, Joe says yes yeah Night's nice Watch generally doesn't give a shit what their opponent does. <laughs> Agreed. Is this true. is true. You just need to get your icons spread out, right? And if you need to afford that, some of that's expensive, right? The ranging party and stuff. You get some unsworn, unsworns, whatever they're called. Unsworn, unsworn apprentice. apprentices. Unsworn apprentices out with this, and then you're laughing because you just give them icons every challenge phase. And it doesn't shit. Matter. But you can get two ranging parties out with this. Or that. Shit, man. Yeah, let's see. Uh, you can ambush in the Hound twice. Uh, Lannister Rose, you can drop out like Randall and Jamie in one turn. <laughs> That's true, man. If you're playing with a lots of like a hot, like we're talking about Sirio, mm -hmm. Nymeria's, all these five cost guys coming out, and you're like trying to work them into your deck, lowering your curve. Maybe you don't lower your curve anymore. Well, maybe you play this and marching orders to be and completely calling honest, the banners. My Greyjoy deck does have one copy of this. <gasps> Are we gonna see this played today? <laughs> We're when, talking about well, when all my decks have naval superiority. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let me make some changes. But you'll never second. know when I'm gonna play this yeah, card. You'll that's, never. Ever yeah, know. just don't open with it, yeah. and then no one will know when you're gonna play it, right? Because mm -hmm. a, no one will think you're stupid enough to put this in your deck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's why I put it in because I knew that testing the decks out, I want to see Nymeria and all them on the on the field. Mm -hmm. So I just put this in there just a way to get them in and during testing, like guaranteed. If I have good card draw in my deck. And I was struggling with economy. I might look at putting this in as, as a one of in, in there as one of my sorry one of my economy plots. Because yep. this doesn't have the downside of marching orders. Nope. That gold is sitting there, and I can still use it for events yeah. uh, and whatnot. So marching orders does suck. Though. Yeah, you just have to spend it on characters, nothing else. So this, I mean, as terrible as the card could be. I still just wanted to try it out just to see. So do people don't, start don't, don't judge me, guys. Do people start running Supporting of the Faith if this gets popular? So there's no way you're holding the gold after, so you, then you gotta shit out your hand and then they wildfire next turn and screw you? I, I think it's good in the decks where you're just playing lots of big dudes. Mm -hmm. Gonna, it's not going to hurt you. You're going to play it with a loot, so that you can use that. <laughs> yes. Gold, yeah. and they have to keep, <laughs> yes. To melt them by three. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, God. Because <laughs> they will not use that gold. They'll be like, it's blood money. Yeah. 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 Blood money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't take this with dirty green, <laughs> yeah. right? Loot. Awesome. All right. Uh, 
Play it, Shamar. Open with it. <laughs> Never open with it, says Joe. <laughs> Ever. Uh, play this plus pe pleasure barges and upcoming Hobber Redwin for a bunch of characters. Uh, Hobber is the one that tutors, I believe. Oh, my God. Oh, okay. If uh, I can read chat properly. Yeah, whatever. It would help you on a pleasure barge turn, but it could whiffs and then the next turn. Time to have depths of two or whatever. Let's suck this. Yeah. All right. So next we have political disaster. Steal this one. Uh, four three one. It's an edict. When revealed, each player chooses up to two locations he or she controls. Each location not cho chosen is discarded from play. Plot deck. Plot deck limit one. Four reserve. Well, you know this card, Shamar. I'm sure you've had it played against you a lot in first edition. Yeah, sure Being did. a Greyjoy player focused sure on warships, sure did. whose locations went off his mat onto his next <laughs> player's mat. And yeah, Greyjoy's already getting there with uh, Iron Fleet Scouts, plus his raiding yeah. warships, plus their in-house reducers, plus their Rose Road, plus the King's Road they're saving next turn, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. This is the answer to those decks that just love to sit on locations over the game and get bigger and bigger and stronger mm -hmm. and what about the one the elephant in the room right the builders deck we're talking about the, the night's watch this show it. doesn't stop that though because if you do it against night night's watch they're going to keep the wall and they're going to keep castle black if you do it against great builders they're going to keep yeah the but wall. you've hit their economy though too right but they, it's not going to be that big of a deal i don't think i don't know i think it i i think i look at it as an economy like a choke plot yeah, I'm basically choking you. It's going to get rid of all your other locations. If you want to keep your big effects out, but if you're hurting on economy and you're trying to get players out and you're having trouble, mm -hmm. and you might keep that, mm -hmm. and I may get rid of your wall. I may get rid of your other. But then when you're playing against uh, Tyrell and Lannister, now you're just giving them an out when they play Cersei's Wheelhouse or they play Pleasure Bar. No, Cersei's Wheelhouse. Oh, Cersei's Wheelhouse, yes. What's the other one? Uh, Pleasure Barge is Mine immune. Is Pleasure Barge cannot be affected by this. Yeah. Oh, really? okay. Pleasure Barge doesn't get hurt by this. No. So Pleasure Barge is just sitting around. Okay. It can either, yeah. it can either be chosen as one of the two, nor discarded as yep. one of the ones yep. you go. Pleasure Barge is immune. Okay, to this. I didn't read that. Okay, sweet. Yeah. But going back to the Builders deck, those defensive ones, they're just going to choose the two cards that screw you over. I mean, when do you, when would you play this then? It's a late, it's a late game card. And by that time, when Night's Watch has all their characters out, they don't care if you're going to make them I th use their econ. I, I think it's a good tool plot. It's good to insert it in the game now, because it's going to be needed in the future. We know yeah. this. It stops location decks. It's an answer in case location decks get out of control in your meta. Yeah. And you're just having a problem dealing with, like, we were thinking of the Night's Watch Baratheon one. You're talking about the wall, plus Castle Black, plus Painted Table, plus Red Keep. Yes. Plus economy. True red keep as well. That's right. Yeah, like I'm gonna either hit your hard card draw, your economy, or your power gain. That does limit. Okay. So it's gonna. It, that is true. In those extreme cases, it just keeps those decks in check mm -hmm. from going running wild on your meta, right? But those decks already aren't prominent. I don't think in any meta really. Not yet. And, and Greyjoy's not on top yet. We, will. we don't live in Cincinnati though. <laughs> <laughs> Greyjoy's not on top yet. So like, would guys really counter? I counter see you, play Joe. Those decks with wasting one plot on this. Yeah, I think current, if I remember correctly, the only non-reducer, non-unique locations are in Greyjoy. Mm -hmm. So that, so that's the only deck you are really Which, on with Which, it this. makes sense. The, the, the Greyjoys are the location house, because yeah. all their warships end up being locations. That's a theme. And we steal shit. Yeah. They're usually the... Yeah. Ah. You're on stealing shit. Well, yeah, you know, you're gonna steal my stuff. I'm Give me my and, put and that gas and gray back in that discard pile <laughs> right now. <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah. So okay, it's basically the answer to Greyjoy or those crazy Night's Watch Baratheon decks mm -hmm. if they become. Insane. Or if you're playing a new target player and they don't know how great Plaza of Punishment is, they might choose that as a card <laughs> to leave. No. Hey, wait, wait, wait. It doesn't say. Does it say cannot, it cannot be, saved? be saved? So what if you have a dupe location? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You start duping locations then. And people do that already. Yeah, yeah. that's true. So that's true. Yes, it does not say cannot be saved. It so. should say cannot be saved. Yeah. But hey, so. they, they missed that one. Whoops. Yeah, it should so actually. Again, it could be a total waste. Uh, <laughs> breaks up the Iron Throne chamber combo if they have the red keep out. Also, the locations can be saved via dupes. Yep. And Night's Watch doesn't have a reducer location. True. True. Um... At least you can use your dupes to save. Yeah, we said that. I'll play this and sow the rest. Uh, four reserve hurts. True. All this will do to Night's Watch is hit their Rose Roads and King's Roads. 
Shamar trying to make the case not to play this plot, LOL. Uh, also puts locations. <laughs> <laughs> so I can win, yeah, yeah. Michael says, also puts locations in the discard pile for you're on to scoop up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. But then, of course, he has to not be playing yeah. the warships. So, yeah. So, it's in this, <laughs> in this weird Greyjoy deck where your opponent got all their locations out and you haven't seen them yet. Mm -hmm. And you're like, no, yeah. <laughs> no. But the first Super thing that good. comes to mind for a deck that would play this is... Tyrell for the future where there is the arbor so your economy is you can go down to two locations because one of them provides three gold okay okay and this plot doesn't hit Lannister or Targaryen and that's what matters Lannister has much. character bonuses so they don't care. yeah that's yeah. true and then, they'll just and then their economy can be on their characters they, they keep two locations ah uh. Was that the last card? We got this one right here. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's scan this QR code. And... Oh, okay. Start all over again. So we have the last card in the pack. <laughs> I couldn't find this one on Octagon, our card game, DB. And it's sideways. But yeah, don't forget to conquer Westeros. <laughs> and scan this to see what's in the pack. Anybody who has their cell phone, put it up to the screen now and scan <laughs> this. It's probably not even on site yet. No. <laughs> yeah, no, it probably doesn't even work. All right, cool. So I am going to end the stream right now. Uh, and then we'll set it up for playing some games. So it's gonna kick you guys out, but uh, Yeah, I'll just go live on the channel. It'll be a different URL uh, You'll see it in a second and yeah Thanks for watching guys Peace Let's